Welcome to the Release Your Blocks podcast. I am your host, Victoria Bond. I am a spiritual empowerment coach. I help teach others to show up to their potency so they can fulfill their mission here on earth. I'm so glad you are here. And if you are interested in becoming a medium, if you're interested in becoming a life coach, or if you're interested in shifting your life from the 3D to live more in the 5D reality, then check me out book a clarity call and let's get chatting. Hey everybody, I want to have a talk to you today about journaling, channeling and how you start your morning off. So many of us say we're not a morning person and you know it's really hard to wake up and I push the snooze button 28 million times and of course if you're starting your day off like that it is not exactly going to be easy to make it extremely productive or creative or expansive because you're starting it off with a whole body you don't really want to get out of bed nope you don't really want to go into life today it might be a little bit of a challenge so you're actually uh like unconsciously telling your body that it's going to be a bit of a sloth so i mean that makes complete sense really doesn't it so one thing that i have added into my life is particular structures and systems and strategies and procedures and tools that work for me okay so i've tried to buy into the realities of other people like what are they doing if i work out all of these times that will work or if i eat this way that will work like different exercise routines different different um obviously food ways of eating different diets now something will always fit for someone some type of exercise whether it's you know doing weight training or cardio or a mix or whether it's more like yoga or if you're doing like keto or fasting or whatever like there's or just eating a whole balanced kind of you know whole foods or whatever there's something that's going to fit for everybody there is no right and wrong when it comes to structures and systems and processes and tools at all it's just about finding what works for you and if you have been buying into other people's realities of what they're doing so you want it to work for you then you may find yourself being a little disappointed that you weren't able to make it work for you so you put on the weight you don't have the energy you're still feeling sluggish your tummy is like you've got IBS and it's unsettled or whatever so it's really important to know what fits for you I'm talking about food and exercise because they are both very important in our in our routines in our lives are really really important and it's important for you to know what suits you but I'm going to go back to talking about when you wake up how are you waking up what are your first thoughts when you wake up is it oh fuck I've got so much to do today how am I going to get through the to-do list is it oh my goodness I don't have enough to do today I'm going to be bored or maybe you just go straight into your addictions I need a cigarette I need a coffee um you know oh I I really want to watch my programs today and you go to those kind of clutches that you have to get through the day sometimes we can have four or five of those that we're like oh yay soon I can have this soon I can do that soon I can do this and we can get addicted to food and um, of course we can get addicted to even like gossiping we can get addicted to tv programs and we can use them to get us through the day and what I've learned and I've been addicted to all of those things by the way is by taking out addictions and it's changing your story when you wake up in the morning to I am so grateful I get to be alive today and really feeling that within your body and getting up instead of pushing the snooze button and then going about your day with purpose creates an energy and it, um, you can see it in people right so if you school drop off or when you go to the workplace in the morning you can tell which people are passionate about life and they're doing something different than the people that are feeling sluggish and are feeling low like they're not really there they haven't fully woken up they kind of like left their beings at home in the bed <laughs> and because they told their bodies hey let's keep pushing snooze you're not living your best life because you know you're living from scarcity or 
those stories that you've been telling yourself over and over and over and over again that has become your personality. It's, it's no more. Like, let's stop that bullshit. And I want you to take note now of what those stories are that you are telling yourself when you wake up in the morning. Oh, God, it's Monday. Oh, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. Thank God it's Friday. Now, a lot of those those thoughts don't even belong to you because the collective energy has a lot of them. And I started realizing that I don't have those points of view. Today, I'm recording this on a Monday. I love Mondays. It's fresh. It's like the first day back at school, like a fresh book. I love it. It means I get to rewrite my life. In fact, I went a bit further and I decided to love every single day because every single day is the same to me. If I choose to work on a Sunday, I do. If I choose to have a day off on a Monday, I do. So I actually designed my life around this morning vortex of how I want to show up in the world. It all begins here, people. And whether you're working with me or just listening to this, this is something I go through with everybody. My one-to-one -one clients, like the elite clients, I go through this with them. What is your morning procedure? How are you feeling about that? What works for you? Not what works for me, what works for you. But I am going to tell you a little bit more about mine um, and teach you a little bit about how to journal because there's four different types of journaling that I do and because I like variety. So if you said to Victoria, go journal every morning at quarter to six in the morning with your coffee, I'd say, that sounds great, but on day two, I'm going to get bored if it's one way of journaling. But if you give me four different ways for the four different moods I may be in, I may be like, whoa, super high in life. I may feel a little bit complacent. I may feel a little bit empathic, so I might be feeling a little bit emotional or I might feel like a little bit sad. I don't know, whatever. Like I can feel different feelings because it depends on what's happening with the moon, what's happening with my cycle, what's happening in the collective with the spikes and all the different things. So I make sure that I am fully covered when it comes to my morning procedure. So there is no excuses. I have foolproofed my morning procedure. So this is what happens. It starts off with my alarm going off at 5.30 in the morning. And what I do is I go, okay, the alarm's gone off. And I know that I have to meet a friend in 30 minutes for a run or a walk or whatever. I have made sure that I have someone I can be accountable to. So I get my butt up out of bed until I make sure this is a huge habit because I know how important this is for my growth, for my million dollar business, my million dollar self, all of those people I'm going to reach for my deep, deep, deep why for my business, for my relationships, I require to get up at 5.30 in the morning. I require to move and do exercise. I require to self-reflect and really dig deep into the journaling, the four different types of journaling. I desire a damn coffee. <laughs> I want a coffee. I'm going to have a coffee, okay? I'm going to have a kick-ass, amazing Nespresso, and it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to sit there with myself with my deck of cards, because that's what lights me up, maybe my wand, whatever, just so I can look at it. And I'm going to give myself about 20 minutes of extreme quiet time. There is no cell phone on. If, if I have to message somebody, it's my friend saying, are you awake? I'm awake. See you soon. I don't check my emails. I don't check my messages, even if I'm tempted because I'm like, oh, my one-to-ones have texted me and this is so exciting or, or a friend has... I do not look at them because for me to serve the world, I must serve myself first. I learned the hard way, burnout after burnout after burnout after burnout. Okay, so this morning the alarm went off at 5.30, but we've got this big kind of wind storm going on here. So we decided not to run. Now I had an opportunity to go back to sleep which you know it's never going to be a proper sleep. You're going to drift in and out because your body has already woken up. You're going to go through another hour and a half sleep cycle. So if I was to wake up like an hour later, I wouldn't have completed the sleep cycle and I'm going to feel sluggish and it's going to be hard for me to catch up with myself. Okay, so I'm aware of that. That is like a scientific kind of like thing with, <laughs> with our bodies and sleep cycles. So I wasn't going to do that. It was not going to happen, not on my Monday, not on my fresh page, right? It's not going to happen. So I lay there in bed and I felt gratitude. 
and I felt gratitude and I acknowledged my husband next to me and I acknowledged the warm house and I sat there and I lay there and I kind of just ah I'm so grateful for my body and I thought this is a great opportunity if I'm not going to get my butt out of bed right now I've got like half an hour what if I just lay here and really just sit in a huge amount of gratitude before I jump in my vortex this is something I used to do but Recently, I've changed my procedure to jumping up out of bed, five, four, three, two, one, jump out of bed and then get onto it, right? But I thought, no, 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 there's no emergency. I've still got my half an hour time for me. I still get to do yoga before I start, you know, um, functioning with the children and the family and all the different things. So I'm lying there in bed. I'm feeling gratitude. I made sure I didn't go back to sleep. There was no way I could do that to my body. And then I got up at six o'clock so i lay in for half an hour which was amazing amazing so grateful i could do that no beating myself up i just changed my routine a tiny bit i got up and i got my journal i was like what type of journaling do i want to do today my my brain is feeling a little bit blank because i just sat there doing my gratitude in bed so then i asked questions right and this is the first way so there's four different ways i want to show you of journaling this is the first one questions and I've got my diary right in front of me so I can share with you exactly what I did today. All right? So I wrote, what, con what contribution do I want to be to the world today? What am I willing to receive today? What do I want to create today? What do I want to be today? The other questions I wrote. And then, of course, if you're asked a question, you're going to respond. So my brain starts waking up. And I didn't really feel like talking still. Right, so I thought, okay, I'll just answer these questions. They don't have to be a page long. They can be a word. It doesn't matter. There's no rules. This is my reality. And I write, hope. Be authentically me. And then for the second one, I wrote, channeled information and peace. For the third one, I wrote, juicy content. For the fourth one, I wrote, whoever I require to be. Boom, my brain started waking up. And then... I started thinking, you know what? I know that the copious amounts of gratitude like, is the, is the juiciness of life. That's what brings me juiciness. So let's go deeper into gratitude. And a lot of people don't feel gratitude in the morning or having to go to their job or for Monday or for the wind or for the storm or for whatever, their life, their body. They feel too fat. They feel like they're not making enough money. They're feeling these feelings. So if you're feeling these feelings and you're buying into other people's realities, gratitude seems ages away. It's really hard to find gratitude, right? So this is what you do. You start writing in your journal, I am so grateful for, and I even put dot, 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 dot. And this is what I wrote, my house, healthy family, fresh water, yummy food, my gifts, my business, clothes, my headband, because I was wearing a headband, it was keeping the hair out of my face, which was really lovely. My husband, my puppy, this pen. I was like, oh my God, I'm a, I love my pen. I chose this pen for journaling. It's an amazing pen. This amazing coffee that I'm having. My cell phone. My amazing furniture. Because I'm sitting on a freaking nice, comfortable couch here. Like, how does it get any better? Um, doing yoga because it's windy outside. And I'm a nice and warm inside. My joyful job. Being creative. Being a projector. Understanding. I'm so grateful for the money that is coming to me. I'm so grateful for what is coming. Now, so simple, right? I'm so grateful for my children. I'm so grateful for the wind. I'm so grateful for my body. I'm so grateful for this moment. I'm so grateful for my breath. I'm so grateful for when sunshine hits my face. These are the things that we like don't tap into. We don't connect to because we're looking at the big things. I'll be grateful when I get the new house or the new car. But the problem is, if you don't have a foundation of being extremely grateful for all of those little things, like the beautiful little bee that goes past you or the butterfly or the feather that lands on you. And, you know, rather than going, oh, get out of my face, you're like, thank you so much for the guidance. This feather is showing me. Thank you so much for the wind to, like, literally blow away the crap so I can, like, you know, release the old and bring in the new. Thank you for the full moon that maybe heightens my awareness and it may even keep me awake at night but I acknowledge that it's 
clearing out the old so I can bring in the new for the new moon, whatever. So the smaller things are super important. And I noticed that if I'm not grateful for the small things like the glass of water or the snack or the, the, the bath or whatever, then I am not in gratitude. In fact, I'm not even within myself. I'm actually functioning from the external of the collective energy, and that's not what I'm choosing. So what are you grateful for, right? What are you grateful for? Here's some other questions that you can ask. Do I feel good enough? Do I feel worthy? Am I grateful? Am I willing to manifest? What is my body requiring? Right, so going back to those questions, because there's a, a few more. That's a different energy of questions, though, okay? So these questions are a little bit deeper. So what I mean by that is, what I want you to do is to go with your knowing. So what is light and expansive is kind of like a yes, right? So a yes is light and expansive, which means like, are you a female? And if you are, it's like, yes, you you just know it. Um, if I say, are you a female and you're a male? You're like, uh, no. And you can actually feel that in your body. So when I say, you know, you know, do I feel good enough? I tap into my body. And if I have a yes, I'm like, great. I feel good enough because I am. Yay, tick, that's fine. The next question, do I feel worthy? You know, it's a similar question, like it's pretty much the same, but of course, worthiness is about um, things coming to you. So, do I feel worthy? Hmm, hmm, that feels a little bit random. It doesn't really feel like light and expansive, but it's not heavy. Oh, maybe there's something there I need to look at. Why wouldn't I feel be, be feeling worthy? Am I being authentic within myself? And you're just asking these questions because if you're not feeling worthy, then you're cutting off your receiving. So you want to clean that up energetically and go, okay, well, what does this actually mean? Who around me has made me feel less than worthy? And is that still relevant right now? Do I need to forgive? Do I need to see if this is an old energy? Or is there something going on now that I need to look at? Am I willing to manifest is the next one. Am I willing to manifest again? Am I willing to receive? Same thing, kind of thing. Am I willing to receive? Am I willing to receive? And if you're getting yes, then great. The worthiness is not even a thing for you because you know that it's coming to you. You know, you know that it's in your vortex. If you get a hmm, no, then you might want to ask a question. For me to receive, do I feel like I have to overgive? Am I afraid that I'm going to get exhausted? Why am I not willing to manifest what I truly desire? And you can even ask yourself that question. Why am I not willing to? And let yourself write it out. You know, you might be surprised. And then the last question, you know, what is my body requiring? Again, bodies require movement. They require circulation. They require water. They require food. So what processes and structures and strategies and tools and, you know, just even the question, what would my body love today? So I have the choice. Do I do yoga or go to the gym? And I was like, body, what would you like to do? Okay, cool. We're going to do stretching. Wicked. Amazing. No judgment. Didn't go to the gym. Don't care. Stayed in bed for half an hour. Don't care. I'm still happy. I'm still content. I am still like literally in myself. Amazing. So what does my body require? And all day long. Well, my body requires like fresh fruit. Okay, cool. That's random. Let's make sure that we've got smoothies and fresh fruit and we're nice and light today. Or does your require does your body require some like carbs? Does it require potatoes and carrots and things like that? Um, you know, what is it requiring? Listening to your body doesn't mean listening to your head. It means listening to your body and then listening to what pops in, right? And then actually taking action on that. So there are questions. So there's like eight questions there and they're all very very simple and you can listen to your yes or your no's um or you know you might pop out with just this whatever these answers that you can actually write down you can write four pages or four words there's no right or wrong 
so then yeah we've done the i am grateful so that's one part of you um doing that journaling but then of course what you want to do is you don't just stop at i am grateful for once you've filled up the page or whatever comes through for you i always have at least 50 things i'm grateful for because i'm so practiced at this now and i'm aware of the things i'm grateful for <laughs> like the breathing and my clothes and my pens and my water and all those things um the weather whatever's the weather's doing i'm grateful for it or whatever the time of the day it is i'm grateful for that i'm grateful that i get to create time and space and my own business and that i have complete and utter basically control over my reality and how i react to things you know so i go deep into that stuff and then i say i am so grateful for what is coming next i'm so grateful for the house on the hill i'm so grateful for the spa i'm so grateful for that new SUV coming my way. I'm so grateful for the soul clients. I'm so grateful for my relationship, which is just so next level. I'm so grateful for being able to walk on the beach every day. I'm so grateful for my trips overseas or my trips, you know, to beautiful exotic places where I get to relax and be who I be. I'm so grateful for the time and space that I get every day to work on me. And you basically just say, I'm so grateful for, you know, my solar line clients and my business that is cranking. And I'm so grateful for paddle boarding or surfing or whatever lights you up that you may not even have in your reality or you may do, but you want to turn it up. So when I said, I'm so grateful for my amazing relationship, my relationship is already amazing. But how, how much better can it get? Like, how does it get any better? I'm so like grateful for my six-figure business. But how much better can it get? Because I'm already grateful for it. I'm so grateful for, you know, my healthy children. And how much healthier can we get? I'm so grateful for having time and space. So what else is possible with creating more time and more space for joy and pleasure? So the, I am so grateful for the things that are coming. Are really tapping into you know having more of what you already have that you love or bringing in even more even more abundance even more joy even more pleasure even more exotic foods i don't know like the things that light you up the things that light you up because if you do not ask you do not get and this is why people stay stagnant in their businesses and in their relationships and their lifestyle and their money and their like you know, in their money situations for years and years and years and years and years and years and years because they don't know that they can manifest because they've never tapped into being in so much gratitude for everything. Like I say, being grateful for a flower, being grateful when someone buys you a cup of tea because you can feel, or a cup of coffee, because you can feel the love and you flow it back to them. Thank you for buying that for me. That was so kind of you to gift that to me, right? So, yeah, there's two different ways. Asking questions and doing gratitude. But then also turning that into manifest journaling as well. Manifest gratitude. So, the other one is you may be feeling a bit emotional, right? So, you wake up and you're like, whoo. Holy moly, maybe you're an emotional authority in the human design. Maybe the moon is doing something called your cycle and you're just on a wave of emotions. Maybe you're empathing on every Tom, Dick and Harry. I don't know. You're just going through a wave and you're like, and we all do it. We all do it. You're like, oh God, I'm feeling very sensitive and heightened right now. Um, whatever you're feeling, get it down on paper. So I call it projecting your feelings. So I am feeling, and just start writing it down, I am feeling emotional today. I am feeling this, I am feeling that, because blah, 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 and you just write. And by letting this out, I'm feeling this, and I'm feeling that, and I'm feeling this, and you allow yourself to bring up the emotions and you may even want to cry. I've had mornings when I've cried before school pick up, and here I am writing out my emotions and generally speaking it's they're not my emotions it's because i'm impacting on other people on the collective energy on what's happening with the earth or in the universe i'm channeling information and i'm just like oh my god this is just intense so it needs an outlet and your journal 
is a beautiful way of doing that. So this is projecting out your feelings. You know, I'm feeling this way because this person treated me that way and it reminded me of when I was a little girl, blah, 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 blah. As you start writing the story and just allowing it to flow, you start having aha moments and a nine times out of ten, you realize that the person that you're annoyed with or the feeling that you were feeling actually was, you know, stemmed from somewhere else or doesn't belong to you. And if it stemmed from somewhere else, then it's probably come from, you know, years ago or maybe when you're a child, there's always like a trigger point of where something kind of was created and of course somebody else can just reflect that to you so they may need some heavy healing on that very first event that happened or like i say it's not even yours and you realize that your husband or your mom or your sister or your friend what well, you had an emotional conversation with them yesterday and you tried to help them out and you took on their emotions and if you start realizing that and you notice that and you have that awareness then you can say, who does this belong to? Return to sender with consciousness. This actually isn't mine. This does not belong to me. I release it now. I'm cutting all cord ties to this person. You're not cutting them off. You're cutting the energetic ties so you don't have to feel all their things because we do actually create these, um, basically these kind of little vortexes of energy, you know, um, where people are sucking out your energy or... Um, you know, you're, you're giving it away or you're just connecting to somebody with your your energy and you're just feeling all their, their feelings. You're in their aura. So there's lots of different ways. So I won't go into that too much. So yeah, projecting your feelings out. How am I feeling? How am I truly feeling? I'm feeling unhappy. Why am I feeling unhappy? What expectations did I have of myself to be happy? What would make me happy? You know, so again, you can bring those questions into it. So that is that one. I do that quite often. If I'm feeling emotional, I go, okay, this is how I'm feeling. And I just write down whatever I need to write down. There's no right or wrong with this again. So then the other one I wanted to talk to you about, which is something I've done today. So I did three different types today. I didn't do the I'm feeling because I was feeling great. And just, you know, sometimes I do say I'm feeling great. <laughs> but I did do three types today. And this one took a little bit longer for me. So this one is channeling. So I've just had this awareness that when I'm in a beautiful, clear, pure space, my aura is within my own aura. I've cut all the cord ties from everybody. I'm just cool, calm and collected in my own space that I'm a perfect vessel for channeling and the perfect time to do this. I already knew that, but the perfect time to do this is in the morning because if you have an attitude of gratitude when you go to bed and when you wake up, and you get up, five, four, three, two, one, get up, get your coffee, get your journal. You may have asked some questions. That's cool, got your brain working. You open up your crown and you allow information to come down and through. And it can be quite amazing. It For me, what happens is it's like my brain starts telling me stuff, like either my imagination or my, my deep knowing, and I just start writing. And then later on, I read it and go, oh, wow, I kind of forgot that I wrote that. So I'm aware that I'm writing it. So people can call it channeling, automatic writing, whatever. Um, people have got different points of view. Even when I say automatic writing, I go back to being Catholic and thinking, oh, shit, the automatic writing. What does that mean? You know, at the end of the day, automatic writing or channeling or just writing down your thoughts um, are all the same. Because this is essentially writing down your thoughts. As your thoughts are coming through, you may be tapping into the collective energy of all. And I sometimes ask, what does people, what do they need to hear right now? And then I just start writing. And it's like I'm telling a story or writing a book. But I know that it's not just me. It's in my words because, of course, if I'm channeling through information from the galactic or if I'm channeling through information from, you know, um, beings or or spirit which I do quite often because I have sessions with people and that's the way I work um, it's still my words it's still my spelling mistakes it's still the way I write things in my paragraphs because they're using my brain you know my brain is coming through me it's filtered through me 
So I got a really, really deep channel today and it's two pages. I turned my page, my book around. So I wrote from like totally not on normal pages. It was like long ways and I just started writing. Never done that before. So obviously <clears throat> I felt guided to do that and it was much easier to write and to continuously write because I'm left-handed. <laughs> Maybe that's why they showed me. So yeah, I wrote this amazing channel and I've been, you know, told that I'll be doing more of this in my journaling practices in the morning. I'm not going to force myself. I'm not going to make myself because I've got this information. I today just tried. Usually it's in the middle of the day. I go, oh, I feel like a channel coming through and I do it. But I thought this is a perfect space to channel. This is a perfect time where I've got my morning procedures going on, where I'm jumping into the vortex of shifting, where I want to be who I be and you know put my my beauty out into the world here I am I wonder if I could spend a couple of minutes channeling and see what comes through if nothing came through then whoop de do it doesn't matter I would carry on and go do my yoga so there's not a lot of thinking when it comes to this stuff um, and when I do think it's very fast what would I like to put in my journal today what I do I need to ask myself questions do I need to tap into gratitude do I need to write about my feelings or am I here just to be a channel where I don't have to think, I just have to let my thoughts come out onto paper? So they are the four different ways of channeling. So when we are channels like coaches and practitioners and people and anyone that's really walking and has any type of awareness of uh, their reality but also of collective energy and universal energy what happens is we do channel all the time so if you're listening to this I can guarantee that you channel because if you are unconscious to um, these conscious kind of energies you wouldn't be listening to this you would think this is so far-fetched and I'm getting that if you're still listening to this then you are intrigued therefore i'm speaking to you and the people they would have jumped off ages ago <laughs> if they don't align do it right so we are it's coming to a time where we all require to channel more but we must be a pure energy so we must give ourselves the space to have a clean aura and come into gratitude you can't channel if you're not in gratitude um that's kind of a little bit of a lie you probably can channel if you're not in gratitude but what do you think you're going to channel through if you're in fear or if you're in scarcity what do you think you're going to channel through because i tell you what i don't channel unless i'm in huge amounts of gratitude because i don't want to channel bad things now yep there's no bad there's no good there's no wrong there's no right but there is dark <laughs> and i don't really want to channel that because I am of light and my deep, deep, deep why in this reality is to share the light to awaken people so they can share their genius to the world, all right? So we can lift the vibration and the frequency of planet Earth, therefore the universe, because we are attached to that universal energy. So to be a channel, we open up those energies and we say, okay, I'm just going to try channeling. I'm just going to say, what else is possible with just allowing the information to come through me and my words um, of what people need to know? And then I can interpret that and, you know, share appropriately, whether it's in my content, if you have a Facebook group, whether it's with your friends and family uh, or your best friend when you're going for a walk and saying, guess what, this stuff came through for me in my journal. Maybe it's just for you so you can have a deep understanding. There's no right or wrong so a lot more channeled stuff from me is coming through a lot more galactic stuff is coming through from me and if i hadn't used my morning vortex procedures of jumping into this incredible high frequency vortex every single morning so i can be of the highest service for others by serving myself first i would not be able to quantum leap like i do so that is what i do I, like I said, I choose to do yoga or run or walk or exercise. I do change those things around. I do not like being bored. And not only that, um, I'm a person who, you know, I don't like being stuck in an office. 
I'm never stuck in my office. So if you're a practitioner or a coach or a person who wants to start a business or maybe you're already hitting the 10K months, you want to go deeper, but you've got this interesting point of view that you need to be stuck in an office, then you need to reach out to me because right now I'm just sitting in my bedroom because my office wasn't working and I don't feel like being anywhere else. And I can, I just work from wherever I want to work, however I want to work in my own way, just like my procedures in the morning. I do what I want when I want. And if I want to change them around, I ask a question. Is it okay for me to stay in bed and lie here and give my husband a cuddle and be in gratitude for the next half an hour? Well, hell yes, that feels like an expensive. So why wouldn't I? Because tomorrow morning I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for that walk or that run or go to the gym because it's going to make me feel amazing. So my question to you is, you know, what could you do? How could you set yourself up? And it may not be first thing in the morning. You may have a little baby who is awake at like four o'clock in the morning. I get it. Been there, done that. Bought the freaking t-shirt. Um, maybe your time to do that is you get a burst of energy at one o'clock in the afternoon and you've got a half an hour spot while the baby's asleep. You know, maybe it's like at night before you go to bed. You can still jump in the vortex. You can still be in massive amounts of gratitude and when you're having your morning shower or when you're lying in bed like three minutes before you get up, be like, I'm so much in gratitude for this and this and this and this and this and this are the things I want to bring in. I'm so grateful that they're all coming to me and really get in the attitude of gratitude before you jump out of bed. You don't have to be high. You don't have to be full of excitement and energy. Gratitude isn't about that. Gratitude is about being content within yourself and being in your own integrity, which means living by your design and knowing, knowing what your boundaries are and knowing how strong you are within yourself as an entity, as a being and showing up for yourself every day and doing whatever it takes to do that, especially if you have got children. And this was my, my, you know, my real, that my kids ignited me really. I was like, to be the best mum I can be, I have to choose me. And I feel like I'm gonna get judged and people are gonna think I'm selfish for this, but fuck it, I'm gonna have to do it anyway. Cause I know what my kids need and they need for me to be an energetic invitation for them to choose whatever the hell they wanna choose as they grow up. And if I choose me and I jump into this morning procedure of exercise and drinking water and journaling and having a coffee and being in gratitude and channeling it or whatever resonates with me at the time, we go through different kind of phases. If I do that, I'm going to die knowing that I did my very best for myself so I could serve my children by showing them how to live, how to live in integrity how to live from life and love and how to live in your own reality and be responsible for your choices. No matter how old they are, no how, matter how old you are. I hope this resonated. I would love to hear from you. If you are not yet following me on Holistic Energy Shifting Intuitive Upgrade with Victoria Bond, um, looking at my halohealing.nz website or, um, you know, following me on Instagram, make sure you come over and check out all those spots. I do live card readings. I do riffs. I do all sorts of random things when I feel like it because that is the way I function. But one thing is for sure, one thing is what I do, and I invite you to do that too, is always serve yourself before you serve others and do whatever it takes to do that with no excuses. Because at the end of the day, the only person that really like has that responsibility in your life to make you happy is you. And I promise you that. So sending you so much love. Can't wait to hear what resonated with you and I'll talk to you soon. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for joining the Release Your Blocks podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear from you. So please leave a review and tell me what your favorite takeaway from today was. There is so much more from where this came from. You can also find me at Holistic Energy Shifting on Facebook, where you can find more content, more coaching, and more guidance. Have a grand and glorious day, and I'll see you next time.